Good afternoon. Uh, in your schedule, it's written that now is presenting Mr. Wojciech Jaworski. I'm not Mr. Jaworski. However, I have the pleasure to speak in his name. He was unable to come here today. I'm going to present a research that I was doing with Mr. Jaworski during my master's studies. I, I'm not part of the Cyber Emotions Project, and I'm grateful that I can present to you and hear your presentations today. So, the topic you see is again sentiment extraction. We heard a lot about it today. Probably you think, oh no, I, cannot, I won't stand one more presentation about sentiment ex extraction. But fortunately, I will present a completely different approach. I believe it's a completely different approach. Uh, I will start about what task uh, we take with Mr. Jaworski and why, uh, how we cope with that, and what emerged from it. Okay, so starting with what task we took. So we heard today a lot about extracting sentiment for text, yes? We have some particular text, long, short, and we want to decide what's the overall sentiment value expressed with this text. Let's, let's, take, let's take a different set of, primary, of, of data. So we have set of text corpora. For example, one corpora is a big set of articles from a newspaper. For example, the Telegraph, the Guardian. And we have also a set of words. And we want to assess the sentiment value of those words in those lexicons. So we want to obtain this function that will take a corpus, a, a word, but only will take a single word. We are not assessing text, short, long. We are also, those words are also not some kind of named entities that constitute the main subject of text, yes? They are just common use words, whatever words we, words we want from the corpus, and we can assess the sentiment value towards those words. So uh, the overall principle is to obtain with this function some kind of perception uh, represented by authors of a text corpus, yes? And later to compare different groups that made corpuses. So what was the inspiration for this research? About a year ago, I had a discussion with a psychologist from Warsaw University. Uh, at this time, uh, she was working with semantic spaces. She was doing several experiments with them. Later on, I will describe in details what are semantic spaces, what I call semantic spaces and what are they usually called. For now, let's say that they are just uh, models of modeling the meaning of words, the semantic of words in high dimensional spaces. So one of experiments of Dr. Ronchasha Leonardi, this, my friend psychologist from Warsaw University, was to, she, she gathered two big text corpora. It was a text corpora from a big Polish right-wing newspaper, Nasziennik, and big text corpora for a Polish left-wing newspaper, Gazeta Wyborcza. She decided that using semantic space modeling, she will try uh, to assess what's the perception and what are the differences of perception towards words like church, woman, men, abortion, taxes, in this left wing and right wing newspaper. However, mm, she was, uh, Mr. Ms. Bronczaszek was lacking some, uh, somehow the com computer science expertise and was unable to do something above some, some simple task. And what's most important, she had no clue how to evaluate the experiments she's doing. So she, she got some, some data, but she didn't know whether the results are something meaningf meaningful or is just does, is does, does random rubbish, yes? So I decided that it's a good task for me. And I, just, I now gave examples of uh, comparing some political worldviews. But obviously, this method can be used in different tasks. For example, as I, as I want to underline, so when we have the corpus, yes, and the words we, 
we want to assess in this corpus. As the corpus, we see the underlying group that created this corpus. It can be a set of journalists writing a newspaper. It can be a set of people writing some posts on the forum, for example, an age group, a group from a particular geographical region. It can be also a market segment. So when we will know what is the perception expressed by the sentiment towards some words, uh, we can do some psychological research right, like Mr. Chasek, but for example, do some opinion polls, or for example, in marketing, we can, we, if we want to communicate some message to, a, for example, some market group, it will be helpful to know which <coughs> words should we use and which words we shouldn't, yes? And having the sentiments, uh, sentiment towards words in this group, that may be helpful. Okay, so this, this is a method on the intersection of, of two domains, sentiment extraction and semantic spaces. You probably, most of you know a lot about sentiment extraction. I won't spend long time here, yes. It started with, with scientists wanting to automatically rate film and product reviews with simple machine learning methods. Later, we, they, there emerged sentiment lexicons, and they gave the possibility to create tools like uh, Mike Telwall's SentiStrength that was presented just before the lunch. Now the current trends are ontologies used for aspect-based sentiment extraction, and we see the flourish of many different business applications in the field. This is a sample screenshot for, for those kind of tools. The other domain which I'm using here in this, in this research are semantic spaces. Uh, it's, it's quite big field. It's based on the, there are several uh, subdomains in, in the field of semantic spaces. I'm describing only one of those. It's based on the quite straightforward hypothesis it's called distributional hypothesis that words appearing in similar context have similar meaning. Seems very straightforward, but it was thoroughly tested by psychologists and, and linguists and, and scientists, computer scientists, before people start to rely on it. So the foundation of those methods was HAL, Hyperspace Analog to Language, uh, designed in the last years of 20th century. That was a very, very simple method. that will be now wet. It's a very, very simple method. In this method, for a text corpus, you produce a huge square matrix for every word in the corpus, you have a separate row and separate column. And in the cells, you have a co-occurrence rate between words, simple co-occurrence rate. And later, you take row vectors from the matrix. This is, for example, for word, I don't know, laugh, yes? This is a very long, this is a vec vector of very long, uh, very long vector of attributes. And what's important to understand here that when we take two vectors from this semantic space matrix and compare the similarity between them, we don't get as an answer how, how often those two words occur near each other, not at all. So usually synonyms do not occur next to each other, yes? Because they are interchangeable. They are used in place of one another. So comparing, getting the simil comparing, uh, computing the similarity between those two word vectors, we see how in, in how similar contexts they occur, yes? We don't see how often they occur in the same place, but how often they occur in similar place. Uh, designers of HAL used it for, for different purposes. However, it was still very simple, computationally not efficient. Uh, later, just a few years ago, actually, op op appeared the method CALLS, Correlated Occurrence Analog to Lexical Semantics, a very fancy word. Uh, it's much more mathematically complex. Uh, it uses co-occurrences. And also, at the end, 
Uh, in this method, there's performed a singular value decomposition in order to make a dimensionality reduction of this huge matrix. So from calls, we just get, we, we still get a row for every word, but we get just a few hundred attributes that after the, this reduction are meaningless, but the performance of the method is much bigger. So scientists in this field uh, often for, for the evaluation and comparison to other methods, uh, used those methods to solve some language tasks. For example, they took synonymity detection task from test of English as foreign language. A task when, when a student that is exam, examined is given one word and also set of, for example, four or five words, and he needs to find a nearest synonym. So, for example, uh, designers of calls uh, achieved 89% accuracy on those tasks, while non-native English speakers, applicants to US colleges, on average, have just 65%. So, it's quite a good result. Okay, so let's go further. So, yeah, so, so, so what's, what's new in this method is the thing that we employ semantic spaces for sentiment extraction and that we don't like usually directly extract sentiments from some other sentiment words, but we extract sentiment from sentiment and semantics. And we also get into this domain of measuring sentiment toward one single common use word, not, not, the, not, the, not the whole text, yes? So, getting you the details. So, I decided not to cope with this. We, we are here on the Cyber Emotions Conference. And I decided not to cope with this whole internet slang and the issues around, so I, I took a proper language. So I took American National Corpus, and not to deal with emoticons, et cetera, et cetera, misspellings that express sentiments. It's a well-balanced, quite reasonably big corpus. I applied calls method to this corpus. Here on the table above, you see on the left column some words, and in the right column, the nearest neighbors find with the calls method, yes, using the cosine similarity. As you see, it looks quite good. Here, is also, here I also show how the method copes with problem of homonyms, yes? Here we have the word apple, that is both a fruit and a company. But as you see, apple uh, managed to be similar both to Microsoft and Pear, while Pear and Microsoft are unrelated in the result. The older semantic spaces method were unable to cope with homonyms. This is getting much, much better. Yeah, and so get back to so underline my method. What's my method? I, I haven't stated that clearly. So I want to take words from sentiment lexicon, which have assigned value of sentiments, give them attributes from semantic space and feed that into a machine learning regression models to obtain a function, a model that will give sentiment to whatever word I want. So, so I needed a sentiment lexicon and I didn't want to get a lexicon that is just binary. There are loads of those. I wanted to have a like, broader distribution of values to, to have some also broader broadly distributed results that will be suitable for comparisons, yes? I don't want to just say that in one corpus something is positive and in and another is negative because that's rarely, it rarely happens. I want to be able to say that in this corpus, this is less negative than in this one. No, I, I didn't know much at this time about cyber emotions. I just browsed the internet and I found that there is a fancy tool called SentiStrength and that inside that tools, I can get the lexicon. So I took the lexicon from SentiStrang, uh, done some work over that, removed some, some features that are more suitable for, 
for the internet language. Uh, here you can see examples. I wanted to, to see and understand clearly whether this, this distribution is proper for my task. I also had discussion during lunchtime with Mike Telwall whether those plus ones and minus ones, whether they are really neutral as it is in the final version on Sentry Strength or whether they are slightly inclined in positive or, or negative axis. So I decided, contrary to, to, to Mike, that they will be not neutral. So I took 2,000 words from lexicon, those that were uh, very often occurring in the, in the corpus, the American National Corpus I took. Okay, so now, I had those words from lexicon with sentiment value. I assigned to them attributes from semantic space using calls. And I, now I took several, I, I tried several machine learning tools, especially support vector machine, support vector machine regression, as well as linear regression, nearest neighbors. I also done some refining. Uh, and what I, I would like to add at this moment, that when I was starting this research, I was not very well experienced in, in data mining and machine learning. So I decided that for the sake of this research, I will get some proper training. So I, I took part in a data mining contest. Eventually, I, I managed to get 14, 14th place worldwide, so it was quite good. So I, I add this to say that you can, I encourage you to trust my results. <laughs> they were properly computed. The results will be shown in a few slides. Yes. Uh, five? Yeah, 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 yes. So I, I done the tenfold cross-validation, yes. I, I tested the method over the lexicon itself using ten, tenfold cross-validation. And in the simplest view, uh, the performance of this method should be measured uh, with root mean square error, yes? Because I assign real values over some big distribution. But however, I, I wanted to have <coughs> something more meaning, meaningful to analyze what I obtain. So I decided also to treat the problem, to look at the problem as a binary classification to, to measure the accuracy. The binary classification, of course, over positive and negative axis. And also I measured F-score, uh, assuming that I'm searching for positive examples. I also decided to add two more measures. Uh, the first one, the CCR, as you remember, the, the underlying purpose is to make comparisons between corpus. So this CCR measure is measuring uh, how many relations between pair of word sentiments are preserved by my method, yes? I also played around with uh, root mean square error in order to make it less, senti less sens sensitive of errors made uh, only on one side of the axis. So here you see the results and the, so what, what I call quasi baselines. Qu quasi because there are five, four separate baselines, not one. You see only one row of results. It's not the fact that I run my method once. No, I, I was computing my results for more than a month. Here is the result that is most pleasing. Uh, as you see, Result is quite good. Uh, I have the CCR of up to 79%, so I preserve 79% of relations between words. However, I'm, I'm worse here on the root mean square error and, and this variant of root mean square error. The, those, met, those results are Quite good. Mr. Onchasha Clonardi already uh, got funding for a grant in, in which she is planning to, to use some of, some, some of the things I, I designed. However, I'm also thinking about making this method better because uh, I, I think that maybe a little bit mistake in my method was the fact that I uh, look at sentiment as a one dimensional values distributed over one axis. So here on this slide, I was planning to, to tell something about the dimensionality 
of sentiments, but how, how, however, already Mr. Arvid Kappas already covered that properly, so I have nothing to add. In the context of that fact, I now discover that there, there, are, there is one sentiment lexicon that would be very useful for enhancing my method, which is MPQA subjectivity lexicon, that it doesn't have numerical values, but it has two dimensions, the polarity, positive, negative, and arousal. It's much more consistent with psychological theories. Thank you for listening. I would like to, I will, with pleasure, I will answer any questions. Discussed. We already discussed those, those, those problems. <laughs> Haven't done tests on, on this level, extensive tests on this level. But that's something to, to be done also. But maybe maybe after also checking with other lexicons. Okay. It, it's not that your lexicon is bad. <laughs> Another question? Okay, so the case. Thank, Thank you. you very much.